Welcome, everybody, to Rochester Lifestyle Medicine Institute's Lifestyle as Medicine Lecture Series. This is our October presentation, and I'm sitting out in my gazebo in Western New York. Anyway, um, I'm very excited to have everybody here. Uh, so as uh, tonight, our lecture is called um, Transforming Family Recipes into Health-Promoting Plant-Exclusive Versions with Brittany Giroudi, who is a delightful speaker with a wonderful story and is a great educator. So we're very excited to hear what she has to say. Well, here's our agenda. Uh, I'm going to spend about five minutes doing an introduction, and then Brittany's got about a 40-minute uh, presentation, and then we're going to open it up to the uh, to the galley, the gallery for um, about 15 minutes of Q&A. We're also very proud to uh, offer several patient-facing programs. Uh, we run the 15-day whole food plant-based Jumpstart, which we have developed right here on this stage. We've had over 2,000 people go through it. We run that on a monthly basis. And uh, it is accredited through the um, American College of Lifestyle Medicine. Our next information session will be October 18th at 6.30 p.m. And then upcoming start dates, November 4th and December 2nd. So if you're interested for yourself or a loved one, or if you're a physician or a healthcare professional, if you're interested for one of your patients, please uh, keep that in mind. Um, and then the program start dates for the LIFT project. Uh, Monday, November 13th, and Tuesday, December 5th. So the uh, Jumpstart program is a medically facilitated two-week Esselstyn-style nutritional intervention to prevent and re reverse chronic disease. Uh, we have published several articles about it, which has uh, gotten us certification through the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. It goes on for about eight, 18 days with seven uh, facilitated Zoom sessions. Where that bug keeps coming after me. Uh, and then also the LIFT project developed by Darren Morton in Australia. Uh, which improves mood using the latest findings from positive psychology, lifestyle medicine, and neuroscience. Uh, both of them have their own private Google classrooms. And uh, also we do have um, CME versions of both of those programs where healthcare professionals can go through the program with participants and receive 10, free, uh, 10 CMEs each for uh, participation. And you can follow us uh, at Rock Life Med at these various places. And let me tell you a little bit about our speaker tonight. Brittany Giroudi runs a plant-based cooking YouTube channel named The Giroudi Family. She has developed hundreds of delicious, easy, and family-friendly recipes focused on a whole food plant-based lifestyle. She has a master's in education and a certificate in plant-based nutrition from T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies. She is the Pittsburgh Plant-Based Support Group co-leader and is on the National Health Association Board of Directors. And without further ado, transforming family recipes into health-promoting plant-exclusive versions with Brittany Giroudi. Brittany, can you please turn your video back on so we can see it? There she is. Hello, Brittany. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Great to so have happy. You. Take it away. Well, I wanted to first share with you guys a little bit about who I am. Um, some of you guys may know who I am. Some of you guys may be new, um, but I'm gonna share with you guys my health story, how I got into this. And then I have two recipes for us to make and to talk about how to have a growth mindset of switching family recipes that you love to making them whole food plant-based and even SOS free. So all of my things that I do are free of salt, oil, and sugar. Uh, and that way, you know, it can be as health promoting as possible for you guys. So my health journey started, um, as you guys can tell, I'm, I'm, I'm look pretty young. Um, right now I'm 33. Uh, when I started my whole food plant-based journey, I was 20, uh, 26. Um, so just to show you real quick, the difference. Um, so on the left, I'm around, I was even younger than 26 there. Um, but I had a bunch of health issues really young. And I talk about finding a whole food plant-based lifestyle really being the biggest blessing in my life. While as you see, I lost a lot of weight, um, but my health markers and I think, you know, my potential for getting disease definitely has lowered. Um, so I'm going to talk about all of that. Um, so on the left, again, I'm, I'm much younger than I am now, um, but I'm around 180 pounds was the heaviest that I saw on the scale. 185 pounds. I really stopped getting on the scale after it hit 185. Um, however, I did not find this lifestyle right after that. So I probably was closer to 200, being honest. Um, I just kind of hid the scale for a long time uh, because 185 has been the biggest I've ever seen that number be. Um, I'm also only 4'11", so I always like to say with that I'm very short. So my BMI was like morbidly obese, 
Um, besides being overweight, I also had high blood pressure where I was on two different blood pressure medicines. Again, at 26, I had a total cholesterol of 242 and I got this test done. I was, I was newly married at 26. Um, we got this test done for my husband's insurance and to save money, we did it. And they checked for something called C-reactive protein. And I never had heard of that before. And mine came back at 16. And it was underlined, big angry letters, <laughs> red. And um, also, you know, then it tells you the normal markers underneath are under three. So I was went to Google and was very concerned. I also had slight chest pain, which also was concerning. And just like overall, my lifestyle of avoiding hills, um, not being active, like all of those things were impacting my day to day. So I was on spring break. I was a middle school teacher and I was going through Netflix. And the day before Easter, I found Forks Over Knives, the documentary. And I'm watching it. And it literally was like they were speaking to me because I saw T. Colin Campbell talk about cancer. And my mom had battled cancer um, three times in her life, breast cancer. And my dad had cardiovascular disease with pretty much anything you can name he's done, he's had done. Um, and so, you know, you had T. Colin Campbell talk about cancer. You had Dr. Esselstyn talk about heart disease. And I literally was looking into my future of having issues. And it was like, you know, there was some, there was control that I had over my destiny. Like if I did something today, I could not go down that path. Um, and so I watched the producer fix all of his numbers. He was much older than me. I think he was like double my age. And all of his bad numbers were so much better than my bad numbers. <laughs> so I watched him fix everything and get healthy and adopt this lifestyle. And I thought, well, like if he can do it, I can do it. And so I decided to do it cold turkey. I went whole food plant-based that night. Uh, read all of the books I could get my hands on, showed up at Easter and picked at the plant-based foods that were recognizable, avoided the ham and other things. And I've been doing it ever since. And it has been the biggest blessing I've ever, ever had. Um, I was able to get off both blood pressure medicines. I was able to get my cholesterol down um, under 150 now. My C-reactive protein is like 0.5, so 16 to 0.5. And um, just, I feel great. I mean, I feel much better than I did at 26. Um, so it's literally been the best gift. I've been able to do this lifestyle with my husband. He's jumped on board and I just have so much of a better future moving forward um, with how my health destiny, because I always say if I, if genetics were everything, I would be so screwed, you know? So it really is empowering that you have an opportunity to change what you eat and your movement and all of the pillars of lifestyle medicine to give you such a great outcome of a future um, at any age. It doesn't have to be 26. Um, you know, I was just, I always say I'm very fortunate to find this young, but you know, anytime you discover it, it's such a blessing. So that's my little backstory. Um, because I've transform my health, I wanted to share with other people. It kind of was like, I found the answer. I wanted to help others. And so I started my YouTube channel just to do that. Um, I just adored getting in the kitchen and figuring out ways to tweak family recipes, getting ways to make food that my husband would enjoy and have other family members that maybe weren't so healthy to try. And it just kind of snowballed from there. And I started, uh, you know, helped out with my plant-based group in Pittsburgh. I decided, you know, I got on the board of the National Health Association and just want to do as much outreach as possible. It really is such a gift because it's given me so much. Um, so you guys can ask any questions on my health journey as what, well. What a um, great, what a great story, Brittany. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna ask Dr. Um, uh, uh, Friedman to uh, to turn her video on if she could. You there, Dr. Friedman? Uh, just because we, uh, yeah, hi there. Hi. Um, I just want to introduce Dr. Friedman, who will be asked, uh, fielding questions later on. Dr. Friedman is on our uh, staff at Rochester Lifestyle Medicine Institute, is our director of clinical studies and a professor at the University of Rochester Medical Center. So um, yeah, what a great story, Brittany. What was your, your total cholesterol initially? And then it went down to 150. What was it? 242. 242. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Starting to talk about it at 
statin. I hadn't quite, you know, they were really focused on my blood pressure. The yeah. one medication didn't get it down enough. So they had me on two and then we were starting to talk about statins, but then I found this and yeah. was able to all the way down. So yeah. that's some Dr. Freeman. Do you have any comments before we, uh, before she, Brittany goes on and shows her? Uh, just, yeah. Just an amazing story. And um, I, I'm I'm sort of curious how what your husband's take was on all of this um, as you were making the changes and how you kind of navigated it together. Yeah. So originally, you know, I think we watched Forks Over Dimes together. I was like, I'm 100 percent all in before the movie ended. I was like, OK, this is it. And he was like, well, maybe don't tell anyone that you're doing this, because I think he <laughs> thought I was going to try it and then go back. Um, and then, so about six months after doing it, I, I really got lucky. I was the cook of the house. So he really just ate whatever I made. Um, I stopped buying meat and cheese and things. Uh, and I'm also lucky that he has a background that is Middle Eastern. So he was familiar with a lot of things that were new to me, like lentils and even dates and things like that. So there were some things like he didn't have as much of a meat centered growing up as I did. Um, but about six months after he, you know, I think his big crutch was like cheese pizza when he would go out with people. And then mm -hmm. once he decided to give that up and go all in, he even saw, he didn't have any, um, he didn't have any like, uh, weight issues. He had cholesterol of 200, which plummeted once he made the switch down. Uh, he also had seasonal, seasonal allergies where he had to take Zyrtec like really bad every fall and um and that went away completely so little benefits like that really cleared up for him that were surprising but we i mean we've both been doing it now for over seven years and just love the food so much and uh love that everything it's given us so he was very lucky he's got to see me we've been together since high school um mm -hmm. so we're high school sweethearts so he really has seen like all the stages so he really got to see the transformation uh day to day mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Good. Yeah, great story. Yeah, thanks for that. Well, we well let's stop interrupting Brittany. That's my fault. Uh, Brittany, go ahead and uh, let's see your recipes. Yeah. So so real quick. Um. So uh, also why I'm so passionate about this is um. There's a picture of my mom. Um. She passed uh, about four years ago from breast cancer at 55. Uh. And her her adoptive mother before her passed away in her late 30s from ovarian cancer. So it's something that has plagued my family and I've lost uncles really young from cardiovascular issues. So again, I think finding your why this is so important to you um, really helps you carry it over a lifetime. And for me, it's so important to share this and to get it out about reducing your risk for breast cancer and, and cardiovascular disease and other things. Um, so that's just, that's really my core of why I do all of this. Um, so... I wrote um, three ebooks. They're going to be a print book eventually. Uh, each ebook has 30 recipes. And everyone would ask me, like, specifically, what did I do for weight loss? So I put them all in ebooks. And I'm going to share with you guys two recipes tonight from them. Um, really, you know, easy recipes. All of the ebook ones that I have uh, for sale are two serving sizes. So really simple stuff. Um, let me just, I'm gonna go to a different view for you guys so you guys can see. So we're gonna make the berry uh, berry pie oat bites on page nine from my ebook. And so these are them. And we're gonna go through and I'm just gonna share with you kind of ideas. So I loved berry pie growing up, it was something, you know, I, I tend to have more of a sweet tooth in my house than my husband. Um, so I like to have, you know, something sweet. And I love these because I have these as a breakfast, but they also make an excellent dessert. Um, also, if you're kind of a volume eater, uh, this makes 12, around 12 muffins, depending on your muffin tin that you have. Um, 10 to 12, you have a a large muffin tin, but kind of 12 standard. And it's two servings. So you can have six of them per serving. Um, so it's kind of nice if you, you know, I like my plate to look full too when I go to have it. Um, so we're going to get started with the recipe here. And this is again, is in our ebook. Um, all of the recipes in the ebook are two servings, which is kind of nice if you're the only one in your house doing it, or if you, you know, 
have a spouse doing it. They're really simple and easy. So I'm going to use a silicone um, muffin tin. I really love silicone ones, especially for oil-free baking. But anytime you cook with silicone, I like to use a baking pan underneath it for stability. So that way there's no oopsies when you're taking it to and from the oven. So I like to just put it on a baking tray. It just makes life a whole lot easier taking them out. And we do lots of stuff, you know, in silicone, like different, you know, whole food plant-based cakes or, you know, different things like that um, for the holidays. And it's just so much easier to pull it out with that. So I have one cup of rolled oats here. Really, this is like such an easy recipe. And then I have about three cups of berries. Um, I'm also going to use two ripe bananas that we're going to mash. Now, I like to use uh, frozen berries. They're inexpensive generally. If it's not summer, you know, it's kind of nice because our grocery stores here in Pittsburgh, sometimes their fruit's not the best in the winter time for berries. Uh, you just want to let it thaw if you're going to use frozen. And today, instead of, I actually have a, it was a mixed berry bag. So there's some strawberries in here as well. Any berries work as long as it's three cups. You know, it can be one cup of blackberries, raspberries, and blueberries, or you can do the mix that has strawberries mixed in. Um, I'm going to mash these up first before we add our berries just to make it a little easier. And again, this can be breakfast, it can be dessert, it can be a snack, you know, it's all flexible. Um, in all of our ebooks, we have breakfast, lunch, snacks, desserts, all included for you. And I just, you know, you can, there's a meal planner at the end where you can pick and choose and plug it in, which is kind of really helpful. But we have hundreds of free recipes on our website. Um, eventually everything comes out for free there. I kind of run my model like Dr. Greger. Um, so, you know, I want to make it affordable for everyone and accessible. So literally you can go to Google and type in Drudy and whatever you're looking for and good chance it'll come up. I think I have over 300 recipes. Um, Brittany, Brittany, I'm going to interrupt for one second. Somebody obviously wants to see more of you and less of your, um, okay. uh, recipe, but you know, what I was going to suggest in the audience, what you can do is you can shrink that part of your screen. Right. But um I can stop sharing for a minute sharing. while okay. I do this. Fair enough. Okay, fair enough. We just uh okay. Great. All right. And I'll hide too. Then you you'll get just Brittany. No worries. So I'm just mashing in the the bananas and I just like to just take some. This is really like the longest part of the whole recipe. You just really want to mash them in really well and then kind of stir in the oats. But we, I love this recipe. It actually holds up great. Again, and what I love is you can heat these up or take them out of the oven warm and put a scoop of nice cream on top. That's really kind of a fantastic end of day. Feels very luxurious and it's very easy. And also this goes over so well with kids. I try to make all of our recipes very family friendly. And this is going to replace like this for me, it was replacing a family recipe of getting like berry pie. And all of those flavors are still there because you really can taste the fruit in this. All right. So it's all mixed up. Doesn't take long. And then I'm going to add in my three cups of thawed berries that were frozen. Super easy. I'm going to fold that in. You can kind of mash it too down a little bit. And the reason why I wrote the recipe and didn't put strawberries, because strawberries are sometimes a little bit bigger, but if they're thawed, they can cut, you know, pretty easily. Or you can just have a big chunk of, of, uh, of strawberry in there too. And what's nice about this is you can always change up. So if you want to do, you know, pears for the fall, or if you want to do cranberries, you know, I always tell people is that you're eating it at home. I'm not. So you can use whatever you have, whatever you like. Really easy. So that's just oats, berries, and the banana. Um, if you can't eat banana, you can also do a white sweet potato. So I would just um, roast a Japanese sweet potato or a Hannah yam um, are my favorites. You can roast it and you can add that amount in there just to make it as like a glue for it is the way I would go. And then we have a little bit of lemon juice in here and a little bit of flax meal. So I like to get our flax meal in as well. It's a nice way to kind of 
sneak it in. It also helps kind of soak up any extra liquid from it. And the lemon helps brighten it, really accommodates the berries really well. And that is literally it. So now we're gonna put it in our little muffin tins and we're gonna bake them. It's around 350 for around, um, I would say about 15 to 20 minutes. You can kind of keep an eye on it. Scoop them out evenly. And like one recipe is done. Um, mango, mango you probably can make work. I would just make sure it's really ripe or, or if you're using frozen mango, make sure it's really thawed out that you can kind of mash it in. Sometimes mango, if you're using a fresh mango, won't mash really well. So if you want to use frozen mango, that's, that's probably the route I would do. You can even like, cook the mango for a little bit, just to make it a little bit softer before adding it. Okay, so I'm just gonna scoop these in evenly and I just like to kind of pat them so they're really full. So really easy. And again, I'm using it on a baking sheet so it doesn't make a mess. And you can bake these off. Now with silicone, a trick that I've learned is that you wanna let it cool completely. You don't wanna take them out hot because things tend to stick with that. So all you have to do is you just have to be patient with silicone. Just, you don't need to use parchment paper or anything. Just let it cool and then you can pop them out really easily. And we have something similar on our channel called apple bites. They're kind of like an apple pie bite. That recipe inspired this one, but it's really simple. And when I tell you, when they come out of the oven, it smells so good. It makes you feel like you were in the kitchen all day, super quick. They travel well once they cool, you can pick them up. So fun. And if you wanna make it only like one fruit instead of a mixed fruit, it can be all blueberries, all raspberries. You know, it's your, your recipe you're working with. Again, I just like to pat them down you can use a spatula or like even a fork or a spoon works good. And you can just keep going. Now I'm making these a little bit overstuffed so I might get a couple less than usual, but you guys can see it really works well. All right, I'm gonna show you guys them up close and then I will finish these after class to bake them off, but really simple and easy. And when they come out, they'll be so good. And such a nice way just to kind of get a little snack in or dessert if you want to eat them or breakfast even on the go. Really, really fun. So that's a recipe we love. We make it all the time. Um, I'm going to go back to my book just to show you guys the next one. And I have a potato German, uh, German salad, German potato salad for the next. Okay, so this one is another favorite in our in our book. And I love, you know, these are things that I grew up with, like potato salad was one of a staple that we really loved. I love having it over greens, um, really fun way to have a lunch that's quick and easy. And what we're going to do today is we're just going to do the potato, but we're going to make the sauce for it and top it. And it's so easy to do in a blender, really, really fun. So again, you know, super easy. You can use this with any potatoes. I have some golden potatoes today. Um, but we do it with russets or reds. You could even do this with sweet potatoes if you want. Again, super easy recipe and look how good that looks. And you can serve it warm or cold. That's a personal preference <laughs> for how you like potato salad. Um, but we'll get started on that. So I have three potatoes that I steamed. Again, this makes two servings. So you eat half of this. So these are already cooked. They're nice and steamed. I leave the skins on. Um, I don't ever take off the skins usually my sweet potatoes or potatoes I like the extra fiber included and I just like to kind of chop them up a little bit so we're just going to take a moment to kind of cube them but they should be very fork tender but really easy and this again stores really well in the fridge and I love what I love about these specific recipes is they're all so quick like I am somebody who loves being in the kitchen and we have some stuff that's like a little bit more elaborate, but I also love sometimes when life's busy, you know, to do something simple like this is, it's very nice on, on busy nights and, and when, you know, the activities start going. So 
especially during the fall, I find. So we're just cubing them up, keep the skins on. Got one more to go. Really simple. And, you know, you can even keep these, you know, steam your potatoes and keep them in the refrigerator and then they end up having some resistant starch, which is nice. Um, so you can get bonus points for doing that. If you're somebody who likes to batch cook and makes things in your, you know, pressure cooker. So that's it. They're just broken up in my bowl. I've just diced them. And that's the only thing in here so far is just the potatoes. Um, so now we're going to make the sauce. Again, this is like super easy. So I have some silken tofu. And I like this because it's one cup. So you're getting half a cup of silken tofu per serving. And I like that it makes it creamy. Um, again, for preventing breast cancer, I try to get soy into my diet on a regular basis. So that's kind of the main ingredient for this recipe. I also have a little bit of plant milk just to kind of help the blender go. It's unflavored, unsweetened. I have some onion powder. I have a little bit of white miso. Now I like using small amounts of white miso um, because, you know, it. I follow Dr. Greger's findings and that the soy in the miso is protective against blood pressure and cardiovascular issues. And I have found that with myself, it has not raised my blood pressure. So you can leave this out, this is optional, but really nice. And then we also have some op optional horseradish. So I make my horseradish myself. Um, it kind of gives it that bite. If you grew up with having your potato salad one way or not, you might be more inclined to add it or leave it out. But it's, but again, those two things are optional. And we're just gonna give that a blend and then mix everything in, top with some green onions, black pepper, and then like it's done. You can serve it over greens, really, really simple. All right, let me mute myself so you guys don't have to hear me blend. It takes like five seconds in the Vitamix to do. Really easy. And it comes just to be this like beautiful white creaminess. Now this again is going to replace maybe the family recipes that have like a mayo or something like that that's extremely high fat and has oil and things. So little Brittany, tweaks like Brittany, can I interrupt you for a second? We got we got a couple of questions in the chat which uh, we might want to get to now. So somebody asked, is a cup of a cup of tofu the same as one package of shelf stable tofu? Do you, I don't think it's um, usually this stable. It's probably going to be end up being more. Um, usually you're going to a cup. There's usually more than one cup in a package of the self shelf stable. You just really want to make sure it's silken. There's all these different types from firm to extra firm to soft. Um, make sure it's silken when you go to get it. And I just measure it out and then I keep the rest for a different recipe. Right. And then somebody asked, you mentioned uh, resistant starch and they weren't sure what that yeah, means. So yeah, I love resistant starch because it's just a nice way to help your blood sugar not take up, you know, go too fast into it, kind of slows it down. So just another bonus way if you find that you're like a little bit more sensitive, it also helps um, kind of, I think feel like it helps as well with weight loss a little bit to do it that way. Um, but yeah, that's an extra step if you want to cook them the day before and keep them in the refrigerator and then use them, it would have that resistant starch part of it. Okay, so that's something that develops uh, after you cook. Can you just explain that a little bit more? Yeah, yeah it develops when it, it, so you're cooking the potato and then you're cooling it and then you can reheat it. It still would have that resistant starch, um, but you know, from cooling it down, it just, it changes the, the um, stance of it. So it makes it a little bit easier for your body to absorb. It doesn't, it's not so hard on your blood sugar. Um, so if you find that you're sensitive to potatoes, that's just a little, hack that I've learned over the years. And it's kind of nice if you batch cook, this makes it super easy to keep them in the fridge. Got it. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to add the sauce to it really easy. And then we're just going to fold it in. But again, this works as kind of like a mayo replacement that you would typically, if you were making traditional, you know, salad dressing or potato salad, if you were growing up with it one way, it's really nice um, to have something super healthier. 
I'm gonna give it a toss. And then I, from here, I like to do some black pepper and I also like to do some chopped onion. Again, you can chop yours however you want. Sometimes we do smoked paprika. Um, it just kind of depends what mood we're in. So I'm gonna chop up some, some green onions to add on top. We've done chives. You could add dill. Dill goes great with potato salad. Um, really, really fun. And then I like to just serve it on some chopped greens and like super easy. Now, um, also it's nice because the silken tofu kind of acts as the protein for this. So we're not really adding any beans, but there was tofu added. You also could add, you know, white beans or a different bean if you wanted more. So I always try to make sure I have like a nice balance in our meals. Um, I always try to make sure there's like a grain or a starch or a bean or a legume. Um, so different things like that, I kind of think about when I build. And I feel like that way, you know, it makes this a lifetime of doing this, not really like a fad where you fall out. I really am conscious about that when I'm building our meals. So I'm just gonna chop some chopped onion, really beautiful. You can give it a nice toss, you can top with pepper and like super quick, very creamy. I will put some on my board just to show you up close. You can see it not in the bowl. Um, but really just like an easy, easy, easy lunch. You can have it for dinner if you want. All of our lunches and dinners can be interchangeable, uh, really simple. So let me just show you guys up close. But like, it's a very luscious, creamy, it fills, you can heat it up to make warm potato salads and people are divided on that. But like really, really beautiful, be coated. And again, I like to serve it on greens. I like the little bit of crunch that it adds, really fun. Um, I saw a couple other questions. Um, I really like the Vitamix for the blender. Uh, we have the Ascent series, which has the ability to do the food processor attachment. So I'm not, you know, there's no kickback from Vitamix for me telling you that. We just invested and it's been the best thing I've ever kitchen equipment I use every day. So if I always tell people if there's one kitchen equipment, um, having a good blender really is a game changer. And we did boil, I did steam the potatoes before. So the potatoes were cooked. Um, uh, about the repeat for the banana substitute, I really like using a cooked white sweet potato. So if you can find a Hannah yam or a Japanese sweet potato, those have the white insides. Um, you can roast them and make them real soft, and then you can add that in instead of the banana for the for the bites. That's a good question. Um, yeah, and I actually get my silken tofu, I get in the refrigerated section at our grocery store. We don't have it um, shelf stable where I'm at. So I just go to the all where all the tofu is really kept, and I just make sure it's silken when I make this recipe. But yeah, I'm happy to answer any of your questions. It's just really easy. It doesn't have to be complicated. You can still have potato salad your family grew up with. You can still have your apple pie in a healthier way. And those are what I just um, tweaked. Um, so all of our recipes are, if you just type in the Drudy family on YouTube or um, the drudyfamily.com, or you know, if you're looking for a certain recipe, Drudy and that recipe, I will come up. My face will come up all over the place. Um, and, you know, I, I always make hundreds of recipes. Our eBooks are available. Uh, if you want to get our eBooks, they're available online as well on our site. Really a nice variety of something for everyone. Um, can, you, yeah. can you make this gluten-free? I'm pretty sure it is gluten-free. So I think if you make sure the oats are gluten-free mm. oats, that would be gluten-free. There wasn't any gluten um, in either one of these recipes, so. Uh, I always make sure if we ever use stuff with gluten, we always have a gluten-free alternative uh, for people. Great but I'm happy Yeah, great job. So Brittany, are we, uh, we're into the Q&A session now? You're, you're done with the presentation? Okay, perfect. Dr. Friedman, I know you love to cook. Oh, um, yes, well, I, I have a question, which is, how did you get started with all of this? I mean, were you a cook to start with or um, did you have to learn from scratch and and what were your uh, sources? 
Yeah. So I, I always was like a creative person in the kitchen. I was always somebody like trying to figure out ways to like make recipes on my own, not really looking at recipes online before. And, but doing this, it really was such a learning curve. So I really just had fun. I was like, I was trying to look at old family recipes that we had and figuring out ways that we can make tweaks. So that's really how it got started. Um, and from there, it just kind of grew with, oh yeah, like if that can be, you know, a recipe, it can be plant-based no matter what. So I've only run into like very few things that I feel like, like lunch meat that like can't, <laughs> that's like hard to redo. But other than that, like it's pretty open. We've been able to tweak everything to be whole food plant-based. Yeah, that's great. Um, and you mentioned the the Vitamix. Um, are there any other um, uh, sort of essential tools? Like what what would your top three or top five uh, things that you have to have in a kitchen? Yeah, I like to keep it pretty simple. So I, I think a good blender, a good, good food processor. Um, we do have the Ascent series, which has like the nice food attachment, food processor attachment. So that's kind of nice that you don't have to buy another it just goes on top of it so for storage that's really nice um so those two things are the main thing other than that maybe like a good set of knives um you know having some silicone pans or parchment paper or reusable slip mats are helpful but uh other than that I, I try to keep it really simple so just we have regular ovens and and I don't really go for all the gadgets other than that uh, Brittany, somebody mentioned that they can't live without their immersion blender. And I know my wife is one of those people. So how do you feel about immersion blenders? We have one. I barely pull it out. I just chuck it all in the Vitamix when we want to blend. So uh, personal preference, but yeah, I, I use the blender more. Right. I guess it's nice to use when you cook it right in the pot and then you just put the blender into the pot. I think yeah. that's what, yeah. So somebody asked, what's the difference between an immersion blender and a regular blender? Maybe you could just mention that. I don't think maybe Britain, you could probably explain it better than I just did. Yeah. So it's like a, it's like a long rod that has a blade at the bottom that you have to have in, in water or in the liquid and it'll, it'll move the blades around to, to puree it. Um, so that's kind of nice to have if you're doing like a soup and you don't want to take a hot liquid or move it to a blender. Um, a blender is more like, you know, you just throw everything in and blend and not every blender will let you do like a hot soup, but the Vitamix is really great. And this is actually the stainless steel. Uh, we have two of them, but uh, we have one that you could see through in this one. So it's kind of nice that you can get multiple ones. This one does great for like anything cold, like um, cold, uh, nice cream. It really helps keep everything nice and thick compared to a regular blender. Um, so we just, we love kind of having those attachments, but a immersion blender will be much more inexpensive than a blender. <clears throat> So yes. there's somebody who's asking if you ever do personal chef work uh, for people who are trying to eat more plant-based. <laughs> uh, well, right now, what I do is, um, well, I do all the free stuff online, but we have a private membership where we do cooking classes, um, where you're at your home, just like this on, you know, on Zoom, and we cook together, and we put out, we put out all of our new recipes ahead of month, so we kind of do like a community-based um personal chef, but I really want you to learn how to do this so that you can take this for the lifetime. But the only personal chef I am is to my husband <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay. A lot of disappointed people out there, Brittany, but <laughs> we'll just have to learn to live with that. Thanks for that answer. Hey, there. Uh, so there's also some questions in the Q&A in addition to the chat. Um, so um, Angie asks, were you ever an emotional eater? And if yes, did you have challenges with your transition to a whole food plant-based diet because of that? Yeah, so I definitely, I feel like you don't really, I don't, I, you, I wasn't going to get to 200 pounds at 411, not being an emotional eater. It kind of comes hand in hand, I find. Um, so when I went whole food plant-based, you know, it just was rewiring kind of like the foods and my why, but I actually found that that really went away because I went through a lot of really stressful things. Like I already had found whole food plant-based, lost all my weight. And my mom got sick and had stage four. I took care of her for an entire year and then she passed. And I really thought, wow, if like 
something's going to trigger me. That would have been it, but it didn't. So um, I just think like sticking with it, I kept, you know, I'm somebody who loves to learn. So I would, you know, read all the books, listen to the audio podcasts, listen to different people online. And that just kept me excited about this and my why. And I just found that, you know, I learned to cope with emotions in different ways. So getting it out through exercise, through meditation, those are all tools in the pillar of lifestyle that I, I definitely used. Dr. Somebody Fee- has, oh, sorry. Um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Dr. Feeman. Uh, some, someone had the same question that I had, uh, you know, having, um, had three boys who, um, every, every, uh, party that they ever went to, um, was pizza, you know, pizza was served. Um, what is your best easy idea for making a plant-based pizza or, um, do you have alternatives for kids parties? Yeah, so I have two. So we just came out this past month um, with a pita pizza recipe on YouTube. You can type it in. And so we love doing pitas as the crust, like Ezekiel pitas specifically. And then we'll just top it with like marinara sauce. We make a like white bean. um, It's like half white bean and just a tiny bit of cashews for like a mozzarella cheese sauce that goes on top and basil and greens. And then that's what we do for like individual pizzas. And that's just like super easy. Uh, We do that camping a lot over like an open campfire. It's my favorite thing to do in the summer. Um, But we also have like a traditional like thick crust pizza on our website and we have a thin crust pizza. So there are lots of different ways. We make a thin crust pizza with just quinoa and water and it works out fantastic. We make a thick crust pizza with some whole wheat flour um, and a little bit more traditional, but very simple ingredients too, and no oil. Um, and just that way. So, I mean, like if there's tons of different options for, you know, all of those different, um, you know, if you have kids or if you have a husband that really wants it, or if you want it, lots of different options for you. Thank you. Um, another question about, um, could you share more about uh, family and friends reactions and um, those who might be resistant to your way of eating? Yeah. So, I mean, unfortunately I haven't, it's always the case where you like reach people you've never met about this lifestyle and change their lives. But sometimes the people closest to you that you have so much hope for don't want to listen to you. So it's, it's hard. Um, We just always try to be an example. Uh, We always take food to share Uh, I always, you know, we always talk about how great we feel visually. I think there's a mass difference. Um, and you know, we're always excited to talk about it with when people want to, and I am all online. And so people, you know, can find stuff too, if they're interested. So it's been, um, it's been interesting. My mom, the year when she got stage four, she kind of jumped into it. Unfortunately, it was kind of too late. Um, where my dad has totally went the other way. And unfortunately for him, he's had like a stroke since then sticking to his habits, um, has had another heart attack, actually had to have stints put in his eyes because his diabetes is out of control. So it's unfortunate. You have to put your life jacket on before anyone else think about it that way. But I always have hopeful. You never know down the road who you're going to inspire and, um, you know, who's someone's life you can change. But I have those family members too that <laughs> it's tough. Mm-hmm. I think we all do. Um, so so uh, somebody asks, do you find that you can eat a lot more than you could previously now that you eat whole food plant-based? Um, no, I mean, like I wouldn't say it's just different. I feel like I'm a lot more in tune with what my body needs. I, I listen to my body a lot more. I can tell like my, you know, stomach stretch resist, like all of those senses. I like can tell when I'm starting to get full easier. I really pay attention to how much water I drink now. Um, all of those things are different. So I just feel like a lot more in tuned. I wouldn't say that like I'm marking, I'm eating like so much more. I think if you're eating, um, lower calorie foods, you know, it takes more to fill up. So a lot of more vegetables and things like that. But, um, I just think I'm more in tune with my body now. There's a question of, uh, do you have a type of, uh, croissant roll or crescent roll, um, 
or, or other roll recipe? Croissants would probably be a little difficult. That would probably go with the lunch. Like there are just some things that are just like a little bit more things I wouldn't necessarily try. We have a couple like oat, like dinner rolls. Like we make one with oat flour, um, like kind of a biscuit and gravy style. Uh, we have like a dumpling recipe that has like dumplings in the soup as well, like chicken and dumplings kind of style without the chicken. Uh, so like different things like that, but uh, traditional croissant will be hard to find without, you know, I don't like any of the vegan butters or anything like that. Um, so that one is a little bit more difficult, but there are different things to like, you know, like to make that are whole food plant-based that can kind of get you over that hump. Right. So Brittany, you're going to have to help us uh, settle a little controversy going on in the chat right now. Uh, there's some okay. question about what vitamin, what Vitamix you're actually using and do you have more than one or is it all one that's combined? Yeah. So it's the base. Um, so I, so I invested in the Ascent series, which is, um, it was relatively new about two years ago. Um, so this is the base for it and they have different attachments that you can put onto it. Now, not all attachments for whatever base you have are interchangeable. I do have the Ascent series. So I have a stainless steel base that can sit on there. Um, I also have a wider, like regular see-through one. And then I have the food processor attachment, um, which is kind of nice to have too. So they have different ones. They even have one that lets you do like baby food or like smaller items. Um, so if you're only making like a small amount of dressing, you can get that attachment for it. They have ones that just have make a smoothie. So it's kind of fun. I feel like as long as you invest in a great base, you know, try to get the Ascent series because you can kind of do more. And I do think they're having like a huge sale for Prime Days coming up. So it might be a good time for somebody to invest in that. Okay. So it's just different attachments that all go on the same base is what you're saying. And you get a food processor in the deal. Yeah, you can buy a bundle, um, get the okay. food processor. Got it. All right. Thanks for that. Susan, what else? Dr. Friedman, what else do we have here? Um, there was a question about cashew cream. Uh, what's your opinion on cashew cream? Um, I personally, um, so I ne necessarily didn't have heart disease. You know, I was probably at the start of it. Um, so I am very cognizant of like not overeating nuts. I keep it to like a fourth of a cup a day at most. Um, but in like different things for like the holidays or like, you know, if you're serving it to people that aren't plant-based or things like that, you know, I, I tend to make, if I'm going to use something mm -hmm. like that, I make it when people are around. Um, but for my day-to-day, -day, like, you know, I would, I would keep it to, to minimum amounts. So I don't go crazy on the cashew, cashew, uh, cream. Mm -hmm. so, so what if some of your favorite recipe, breakfast recipes, in addition to the berry pie oat bites? Yeah. So I love, um, we love doing like, we make these like granola bars with oats. I'm a very oat person. I feel like that's when I, my kind of my go-to. I also like smoothies in the summer. Um, trying to think what else that we eat. We eat oats a lot in the, we love oat groats. So like all the different types of oats, if you haven't tried, you know, a lot of people just think of rolled oats or steel cut oats. They're like, oat groats that are actually the whole form. If you've never tried those before that are delicious. Um, so different things like that. Sometimes I keep it simple and have like just some fruit and um, do, sometimes I do intermittent fasting a little bit in the morning. So different things like that, I kind of play with whatever feels good. And that kind of sounds good to me that morning. Hmm. You mentioned uh, intermittent fasting. I'm going to just challenge you on that a little bit. I, uh, maybe you could explain what that is. And, and I actually like, like to use the term time restricted eating just because it has, I think it's yeah, easier yeah. for people to understand. So maybe you could just explain a little bit about what you, when you talk about um, intermittent fasting, what you mean by that. Yeah. So, I mean, I not necessarily got into it thinking of it as intermittent fasting. It more of was like a quick, like my kitchen is closed at a certain time at night, like here in Pittsburgh, it's like eight twenty three. So like, I'm not going to eat anything for a head bed. Now it's very late because I want to make sure I digest all my food and then can get a good night's sleep. So I kind of started thinking about it as that. And it also helps if you're struggling with weight, you know, you just tend to overconsume things a little easier at night. I find like things in the pantry start looking good, or maybe you go for something, you're not really hungry or just grabbing it kind of as a habit. Um, so I really try to like kind of close the kitchen down by like seven, 
a clock at the latest. Uh, and then, you know, when I wake up in the morning, it just kind of depends. Um, I like that long rest just to give your body a break. Um, and generally, sometimes in the morning, I'm not super hungry. So it kind of happened by accident. You get busy at work and then you look at the clock and it's like, oh, it's 11 o'clock. I should probably eat something. Um, but kind of that that range is just where I kind of really felt good. Um, unless I'm going to go on like, you know, in the summer, we go camping a lot and go really big hiking and things like that, where we grab something, you know, in the morning before we go. So it kind of worked out that way. I really think the nighttime though is really, was really beneficial for me, especially as I got smaller and weight got a little bit more stubborn um, to really kind of close, close that. And I, I heard uh, Dr. Furman talk about kind of closing your kitchen at a certain time. And that really stuck with me and was helpful. Hey, thanks for that. Yeah. Um, um, any tips for living yeah, with Freeman. somebody who has, uh, who eats a lot of junk food? Um, and uh, this person says they don't have the option to keep it separate. And then cheese and chips are the most challenging to have around. Yeah. So I, I mean, if you do have a partner or family that is bringing that stuff in, into the house, maybe you can ask them to store it in a different spot. Or, you know, it's just, it's kind of hard when you see it, you're going to want it or, you know, different things like that. But I would, I would challenge you is to make a whole food plant-based version. So we make potato chips with just potatoes in our microwave, which, you know, you can get a ton of chips out of one russet potato. So you can have that, you know, and we make a snack plate, you know, if I do that, I'll have you know, you microwave your potato chips, which are just potatoes. You can make like a barbecue seasoning to go on top of it if you want to be fancier. Um, but then I'll make a snack plate with chopped veggies and, or maybe a little bit of hummus. And that really does like give me enough crunch where it was easy to cut out that stuff. Um, especially if you still have it in the house. So I would, I would challenge you to just make some plant-based things that you really love. Like maybe like if you have a sweet tooth, the the berry pie bites are kind of nice to have, make nice cream, things like that. So you feel like you're getting a treat when the rest of your family is, right. you know, so it's not like you're missing out on anything. Brittany, I think there's a, that's great for that answer. I think there's a really great uh, question here that we might take us to the end, depending on how long it takes you. Does this diet prohibit you from eating out? <laughs> and do you have tips for eating out? And so this, comes is from, this is coming from a physician. So go ahead. <laughs> It is tricky. I mean, depending on where you live in the United States, it's easy or in the world, it's easier or not. Pittsburgh is not that great. Um, we do not really have any whole food plant-based restaurants. Um, there are ways to get around it. Like when we go out, you know, if we go to an ethnic restaurant, there's ways to order certain things. I'm always really vocal about speaking up for what I want, uh, preparing things how I want, building from the sides. Um, but it's, it can be frustrating. So we generally do not eat out. If we do eat out, it's like specific places, like a Thai restaurant here. Um, I saw someone who was from Oakmont. If that's Oakmont in Pittsburgh, I know where you, where you're at. Um, we go to a Thai restaurant and they make spring rolls and it's like spring rolls with some rice noodles and tofu and veggies. And then I'm happy just to be able to order something. I don't have to cook. Um, and that's great, but I mean, most times we, we eat at home and I mean, it just makes sense because they're going to charge you so much money for something that's like a side that costs nothing to make. You know, I, you go and sometimes you build a side up and it's, it ends up being like $12 and you know, it's, it's all, you know, plant-based eating is super affordable and, you know, you know, it didn't take them $12 to make it. So I've kind of, I have a couple of spots that we know how to order, but other than that, we're eating at home. Mm. But there was a great delivery food system called Whole Harvest, which just started a couple, I think a year ago. And they have a whole food plant-based SOS free meal delivery that you can order at home and keep in your refrigerator. So if you, like similar to Mama says, um, so there are things like that if you're tired of cooking <laughs> that you can get. And Thank you for in that. the Rochester area, just uh, there's also sweet pea um, that mm -hmm. delivers. So, yeah. yeah, I was going to try to avoid the protein question, but it's come up <laughs> twice here. Uh, somebody says, "What do you include to cover the need for protein?" And then somebody else, 
uh, asks, I am concerned about enough protein and iron. Any advice? So I eat beans and and vegetables and everything else that has protein in all amounts. But, you know, I just make sure like for me, when I got started, uh, what I did was I followed Dr. Greger's daily dozen because it was really nice how it set out about having like half a cup of beans at each meal. Um, and that way that really helped me. And when you put it all into your chronometer or food log, it ends up being enough protein. If you're eating enough calories for your weight, you end up having enough protein. So after when I was started, and if I was nervous about the same question as you, I would be, I'm very logical. I food log everything I had, made sure, you know, I had black beans, I had, you know, lentils, I had tofu, something like that. And I added it all up and I had way enough protein for my body weight and everything. So that made me a lot less concerned about that question. Um, and same with iron. So you can track how much iron you're having. Um, we sometimes I like blackstrap molasses because it has extra iron. I make sure I eat a vitamin C source with my greens to help me absorb the iron. So I always make sure I have like a red bell pepper if I'm having a big chopped salad. Different things like that can be very helpful. Um, and you, it's really nice to log it so you can actually see, okay, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm getting everything I need. I'm, I'm going to reinforce that, that answer for you, Brittany, because I think you, you said something that's absolutely correct. If you're eating whole foods and you're getting enough calories, you will get enough protein unless you're living entirely on fruit or something that's, there's a very few things that are low in protein, like apples are maybe 2% calories from protein. Bear, you know, blueberries are only 5% calories from protein, but almost everything is more than 10% calories from protein. And that's all you need. So get you, you get enough calories, you're going to get enough uh, uh, protein as long as you're not, the calories aren't coming from empty calories like oil and sugar, which Brittany doesn't cook with. So that's great. Dr. Fima, let's, uh, we're, we've, we've gone over, but let's see, is there any more, one more question for Brittany before we wrap it up here? Um, what do you do with oat groats? <laughs> yeah, so oat groats, um, they take a little bit longer to cook. So you can think of, so everyone forgets about oat groats, probably because you don't really see them at your grocery store. So oat groats are actually like the whole oat grain. And then we cut them to make steel cut oats, and then we cut them and flatten them to make rolled oats. So rolled oats are really like the most processed of the oats versus oat groats. Oat groats, we cook them in the Instant Pot. If you type in oat groats in Geruti, my face will show up. I'll show you a video of how to make it. We cook them in the Instant Pot, and they actually can really taste like rice. Um, so if you are looking to like a replacement for rice or different things like that, we actually eat them kind of as a grain, like rice and farro as that, or we can make it as a porridge. So they take about 40 to 50 minutes on the stove um, to really cook. But, you know, there's lots of different ways to enjoy them. It's a great way of having the whole oat groats. Um, I just spoke at Ethos Farm Days this uh, earlier in September, and they actually grew oat groats on the farm. So that was really fun to like come home with oat groats from Dr. Weiss um, and have them. But I get them on Amazon. Uh, you definitely can find them. Some co-ops carry them. They're really great. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, and let me just review for people who are on the call. We do have some upcoming events. Uh, check out our website, rochesterlifestylemedicine.org. And uh, we have um, our, our next Tuesday will be Lifestyle Medicine Grand Rounds. And uh, we follow the act, the traditional type of grand rounds where it's an actual patient case being presented to a, a, a panel of lifestyle medicine experts. And uh, so, and that's worth one CME. If you're a healthcare professional, you might be interested in that. It's free. Uh, and then we will continue our lifestyle as medicine lectures uh, in, um, in November and December. And I don't have those in front of me, but check out our website because they're always fun and interesting. Oh, the Bob's put up the calendar. So uh, Brittany, thank you so much. Do you have any final words for us before we sign off? Yeah, if you need anything, um, again, just go to Google. You can type in Gerudy Family. My YouTube, my website comes up. I even have my phone number posted on our website. So if you need me, I have people text me mid-making something, or if they have a question, I'm happy to answer it. Uh, I'm just around to help you guys. And uh, yeah, I would love to, love to see you guys around. But thank you so much for having me. It really was a joy being here tonight. It was a pleasure, Brittany. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Uh, Dr. Friedman, thank you so much. Uh, and um, Hope to see the people in the uh, audience uh, again soon. All right. And thank you to our engineer, Bob. Yes.